and welcome to Words From My Face. On tonight's show, we are going to be talking about the Constantine TV show that just came out last Friday, so I hope you watched it. If your name is Brendan, I know you didn't. Um, we're talking about the Suicide Squad movie, which has a director announced for it, and we're also going to be getting into PlayStation's SharePlay. Stay tuned. Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, Robocop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. Yo. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> Chewbacca. There's nothing that like kind of peps you up more than a Chewbacca chainsaw. I mean, at least it gets to the adrenaline rush, and that's all I know. That's. Uh, I mean, I think everybody out there feels the same. Chewbacca yeah, chainsaws yeah. equal good times. Or unless you're on the receiving end, then it means really, really horrible worst time of your life ever time. Really, we're just saying that because otherwise, you know, bad things might happen. Yeah, he doesn't like it when you underestimate. <laughs> So, yeah, so it is Monday. Oh, wait, it's not. It's Sunday. <laughs> I fooled you. <laughs> that was a funny joke. It's a I, calendar I, thing. I, I fooled people. Yeah. All right, well, it's actually... Oh. All right, well, it is Sunday, actually, but we're doing our entertainment show tonight because tomorrow we will be watching the Redskins get killed by the Cowboys. No, no, we won't. We already predicted this game. That's right, we did predict this game. And Tony Romo will have three interceptions. Don't ask us how. Don't ask us how. He will It'll receive happen. three interceptions. Yeah, he will. He will not necessarily throw three interceptions. He but will then he'll throw intercept three balls. balls. That's why they'll lose. Yeah, it's a, you know, it'll be one of the craziest games ever watched ever, but yeah, it'll happen. So, but let's start off this week the same way we start off every week, and that is with the horrible movie of the week. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we should change the name of it, because it's really the five reasons why you shouldn't watch this movie. Okay, we're just going to change it. It's the five reasons why you shouldn't watch this horrible movie of the week. Review. That. That's a very long day. <laughs> we should get some cool acronym for it. We'll think about that uh, for next week. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to think about it this week. So this week, uh, it, trying to get into the Halloween spirit, I watched uh, what was tagged as a horror movie, um, but it said it was a horror comedy movie. So I was like, okay, you know what? I really don't like horror movies, so it's not fair to, to watch one of those because I'll hate it anyway. It doesn't really matter. And, you know, sometimes on these horrible movies, uh, I do end up liking the movie. It's happened once or twice. It's like, oh, you know, not so bad of a movie. I you know, tricked myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. They just got a bad rap for a good movie. Yeah. Sometimes that happens. Yeah, that didn't happen for this one. So, yeah, this movie is called Detention. And, again, it was kind of billed as, like, a horror comedy movie. And it stars Dane Cook. Uh, he's in it. And that should have been a good tip-off that it'd be a bad movie. But he's in a lot of big ones. So, uh, also, Josh Hutchinson is in it. You might know him as Pita from The Hunger Games. He's been in a oh, lot of different yeah, okay. Okay. So, you know, it's not like it's non-famous people. There's a lot of famous actors in this one, uh, or two. I mean, Josh Hudson, but he's like, I think he's only big for, for Hunger Games, as far as I'm aware. But I guess... Uh, yeah. Yeah, as far as I know, too. I agree. That, that's all he's known for. So, But so I decided to watch. And, uh, yeah, let's just get into it. Let's go with reason number one why you shouldn't watch this. Um, yeah, in the beginning of the movie, and they kind of carry it throughout most of the movie, they do one of those things where, you know, like, somebody's talking, and they're kind of breaking the fourth wall, and they have, like, like words pop up. Like, if you've ever seen Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, they do it really, really cool in that movie. Where like, power up or something like that. You know, it, and it can work with some movies. It can. It just is horrible with this one because it's like literally just saying the same things that they just said. And it's like, I don't need to hear it and read it. Maybe if you needed subtitles, then it'd be in a different language, but it's really distracting slash annoying. Yeah, or if this was closed captioning, but then I would have asked for closed captioning. Yeah, I don't need that. 
not needed, and what you're saying is really stupid, and, like, the whole intro is like, you know, oh, I'm turning my locker combination, and the producer is this person. It's like, no, it's just... They, they were just bored, and they're like, hey, let's do something creative and fun by ripping off other people's ideas. Ha! And, yeah, that's kind of what the, the... That was the beginning, like, 10, 15 minutes of it. And then, again, they just kept having the stuff throughout it. It was really stupid. Really, really stupid. Uh, number two... Yeah, and I don't know if people will agree with me, but the lead character, male character's name in this is Clapton, and I just think that's a stupid name. All right, if you're going to name yourself, your character, like, something cool, and he's supposed to be, like, the coolest guy in school. No, his name's Clapton, not cool. Not cool at all. Name name him, like, Max Powers. Yeah, as a last name. Clapton is cool as a last name, not as a first name. Hey, man, man, any last name is even cooler as a first name. No, mm -mm, not in this. It's like saying this guy's name is Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger Palmer. <laughs> like that. No, not a cool last name. Not a cool first name, all right? Not a cool first name. My name is Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger Palmer. That was like the worst <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. Get to the chopper if you want to live, because my name is Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger Palmer. And that, you know what? Actually, that is a pretty cool first name for a character now. I take it back. Schwarzenegger Palmer... If somebody wants to use that in their movie, it's cool. Just send us a check or it's for my face. We'll cash that check. <laughs> we'll get, none of it's Arnold. <laughs> none of it. None of it at all. Um, and so let's keep rolling on. Uh, number three, and this kind of... I kind of just started doing this. Um, it started with 15 minutes. It's Then it went to 25. Then it went to 35. Then it went to like 43. Then it went to 50, like 7 then 65, then about 77, and each time I had to cross out that number, and that is number of minutes I have neither been scared nor have I laughed. <laughs> so, yeah. It, it just, it just, it, it wasn't scary and it wasn't funny, so, okay. Yeah, and in the tag it says this is a scary, funny movie. I was expecting a movie kind of like, you know, Scream. There's some comedy in it. There's some joking around. Funniness. Or, oh, hey, the, even, or even a scary movie type movie. Yeah, I was thinking that. Like, it would be more likely to me that it would fall on the other way of being more of a comedy than a scary movie than a scary movie that's more that has some comedy. I don't know. I yeah, guess I, I do. But. I was willing to let it go either way it wanted to. I was open for ideas. I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot. And, yeah... Neither and, and the movie, I believe, was about 90 minutes long. And so, I mean, the end tally should have been 90 minutes. Neither ha I've neither been scared nor did I laugh at all. Yeah. So, that was that. Um, number four, um, in the middle of the movie, around like the 45, 50 minute mark, they decide to suddenly just jump from story to story to story that has nothing to really do with the main storyline. Like, they, they have something going, and then it's just like, oh, let's do something different. Like, all of a sudden, there's a guy who, who is a fly man comes out, and that was part of it. And then, um, then for some reason, they do, like, a Freaky Friday, th Friday thing, and another set of characters switch minds, and then it becomes a time travel story. Um... Yeah, and none of it made any sense. It was almost like they were like, hey, let's listen to this idea for a movie. Let's write it down. Okay, wait. That movie will only take 25 minutes. Uh, we need to do more movies in there. So just I'll throw this in there and uh, throw that in there and then throw that in there. If you've ever seen the South Park episode where they, they, come, where they show how Family Guy comes up with their theories, um, yeah, that the walruses or the, what were they, porpoises or walruses? I'm going to say porpoises just because... Because that's the, what I like to say. The porpoises that pick up the idea, like ping pong balls, and drop them over, would have made a better movie than this. It, it just, oh my god, it just, it's almost depressing. I like almost never want to watch a movie again because of this movie. It, it, it was just so bad. Just so, so bad. Yeah. And let me just get on to number five. And this isn't really a reason not to watch the movie, um, but it is. But, like, the description totally lied. And I really think that I would have grounds 
for some sort of lawsuit against the people who made this movie because of total false advertising. And all they did was make me waste about an hour and a half of my life that I could have dedicated to, you know, doing other things like playing Destiny or sitting and watching paint dry or, you know, anything else. Literally, I would. I think I would have had more fun driving a nail through my hand than watching this movie. It <laughs> would have been scarier. It would have definitely been scarier. It would have. It would have scared me a lot more. I mean, I would have definitely got more of an emotional response out of it. Like, oh, why am I doing this to myself? Oh, but it's better than watching Detention. Oh, oh, please. Yeah, so this movie um, is going to go down as one of the worst movies I've ever watched. And it's getting it's a zero. Some pretty bad ones. And it's getting a zero. I mean, I'm no what? Chewbacca chainsaws out of five. Zero. I didn't Absolutely know we could go that low. We've done it one before, I think. Um, and this no, one. No, I think our lowest was like one. No, Maybe well, half. this is a zero. This is a zero because it provided. I mean, honestly, it, it was one of those things. It's like you know when you're in class or something, and you're like, oh, I want time to go by, or you want you want something to happen, you know, and time feels like it's going really, really slow. I literally would check the movie every 10 minutes just to be like, oh, is it almost over? I feel like I've watched it for a past half hour since the last time I checked the time. Nope. And that's why I have all these tr- cross-out marks about when it was, uh, you know. I was like, okay, maybe it's over now. Oh, no, it's not. Okay, maybe it's got to be. I've been watching this thing for like four hours. It has to be almost over. No, it's not. you still got 45 minutes. It's just like, oh, my God. I mean, it, it just seriously it was one of the most painful movie-watching experiences I've ever had. There's no redeeming quality to this movie at all whatsoever. So if you want to watch a movie that makes you want to drive a nail through your hand, then go for it. Be my guest. Watch Detention. Have fun with it. But if you'd rather just, you know, do any... Like, literally, it would be more productive for you to just turn off all the lights and sit in a dark room for an hour and a half (laughs) than to watch this movie. Honestly, it would. You know, I would I would say sleeping, but you know what? You actually like rejuvenate and stuff when you're sleeping. But no, you'd have to stay awake and look at nothing <laughs> and somehow blank your mind out so you can think about nothing. Yeah, zero star. Just give me a Chewbacca chainsaw, just so uh, like I got, it's well, like, I got one for them. How about just boom, yeah, boom again boom. and one more time. Boo. Another one for good measure. Boo. We need a longer boo that'll just go on for ten minutes because I, I just <laughs> wish I could find the writers and producers of this movie and and torture them the way they tortured me because it just was not fair and not fun. Even the horrible movies that I've watched usually are so bad that they have some sort of you know it at least is a little bit entertaining. It's like oh, that's so implausible and stupid. No, this was just like uh okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm I, like, have I ever gotten like angry about a horrible movie? I don't think so, because I know what I'm getting into usually when I walk into it. But this was like below horrible movie standards. Wow. That I sucks. mean, honestly, <laughs> I, I'm trying to think about the money they could have used for anything else. You could have built built like like 15 Ebola clinics in Liberia, or you know, I mean, literally just burning the money would have been more productive than making this movie. <laughs> It they just, could have burned the money and just recorded it and made a film of burning the money. I honestly would have, would have been more entertained watching them just burn money for an hour <laughs> and a half than this movie. Anything would have been more entertaining. So, yeah, zero, zero Chewbacca chainsaws. So, all right, I'm just going to get past that. We're done with it. I watched it. It's over. I'm going to pretend I never watched it. And I'm, we're going to talk about something that I did watch that, you know, was actually fun. Let's talk about Constantine the TV show. So if you've been watching this show, which I hope you have, you've been watching and noticing that we've talked a lot about the Constantine show. This has been an awesome show we, uh, that we talked about because the Hellblazer comics, its source material, is, is you know, it's a cool realm of the comic book series. Uh, there's not many out there. This kind of started its own, like, occult version of the comics. I mean, they even made a Justice League just for, like, the occult guys. Like, the, it's called Justice League Dark, I believe, in the New 52. And so Constantine, when we heard that he was getting his own show, I was like, yay, awesome. Pro- hopefully it'll it'll just make the, the Keanu Reeves movie go away. So let's give you our, my review. So it was a pilot episode. And Brendan, what did you think about it? It was terrible. I hated it. Everything about it. Um, let me ask announcer Brian if you if you watched it. I don't think so. 
didn't watch it. What do I ever watch? If I if I watch it, how are you going to tell me about it? Like you're telling the people about it. Come on now. True. Announcer Brian just doesn't know why you don't watch anything. But no, no. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, okay. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Well, um, I did text him like 15 times. I was like, watch the show. It's about to start. It's about to start. Watch no, it. To be honest, I didn't even see those messages until after. Like, I, I didn't. That's My phone very was dead or something like that. But no, no, it's all right. Because I can tell you about the show. So, now it was the pilot episode. And if you don't know what a pilot episode is, it's it's kind of something they throw together to say, this is our idea for a show. If you give us more money, we can make something even better. And, and, and so that's really what it was. Now, so it was rough. It was it was raw. It wasn't really what you're going to start seeing in the weeks to come. Uh, I look back to the first episode of Gotham. That was a really... I enjoyed that pilot episode, but again, it was rough. They're, they're developing ideas. They're showing you what the show's going to be about without really kind of pinpointing. So, you know, regular show, I, I imagine, will get better. Um, the opening scene, though, was, was pretty darn awesome. I, I don't know if I've ever seen a show where the lead character decides to check himself into a mental hospital so that he can forget something. So the opening scene is really him getting strapped into electroshock therapy and shocking the heck out of himself. So, uh, you know, pretty cool. Um, and I don't know if Con- Constantine ever does that in the comics, but... They may, because who knows? There's so much in all those comics that... Who can keep track? That guy? You? Oh, I, I will keep track. Fine. Not you, the guy. The guy, the guy out there. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. Guy. You, that guy. You do it? Yeah, he'll do it. That person. Right. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so and I thought that was pretty cool. And they're really trying to showcase, you know, kind of his, eh, you know, kind of a twisted sense of humor. And they do let that in. But the humor for Constantine is kind of hit or miss in the first episode. I can see a couple times I was like, ha, 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 that's really funny, I'm laughing. You know, not not like a sarcastic way. And then a couple times I was just like, that's stupid, why would you say something like that? Like, that's not funny at all. So, again, it's a pilot episode, so I, they're kind of going to weave them way, their way into their the groove, you know, the, you know, okay, this is the real Constantine. So that was pretty, you know, that was his or miss. Now, they did try to introduce a ton of ideas. I think almost too many during the show. Now, Constantine in the Hellblazer comics, if you don't know how that was run, it actually did, it was one of the only comics I've ever heard of during its 30-year run that literally they aged him every every episode. So, I mean, every comic. So every comic, you know, if it was a monthly comic, he was a month older. You know, everything was in chronological order. By the end of the Hellblazer comics, I think he started out being 30. After the 30 years, he was like 60-something. So, you know, that's pretty interesting. And you know, it's going to be hard to cram all that in, but you have a TV show. Hopefully it'll last a couple seasons. You, you can wait. Now, a couple of the ideas, um, they talk about a friend of his, Jasper, who's kind of like, oh, you know, the main char- the main plot of the first story is he has to help Jasper's daughter, who a demon is coming to get her. And Jasper's dead, and you can see that he was kind of like, hey, man, I want you to be a, a, you know, a cult fighter. You know, I want you to fight these bad demons and stuff. And he's kind of like, ah, I just want to kind of be a con man. But you kind of see him going in that direction. They show the... Kind of, they tell you why, what event happened that led him into checking himself into the hospital, and that will be one of the big catalysts for the show, um, which I'll, I'll just tell you what it was. Uh, he was trying to get rid of a demon, so he called up a bigger demon to drag the other demon into hell, thinking he could control the bigger demon, which I'm going to guess is going to be one of the lords of hell, because in this DC universe, they have multiple, like, Satans, pretty much. Um... And it ends up well, carrying one of them. Satan's like one of them. There's Lucifer and there's just other lords of hell. Yeah, yeah. So there's gonna be multiple lords of hell. Even well, though yeah. they, they talk about how at one point like Lucifer did rule all of hell, but things happen. Yeah, apparently. Well, you know, you're in hell, so hell happens, you know. But uh <laughs> and so and so this this bigger demon drags this girl to hell, and so this is gonna kinda set Constantine on his way for revenge. He wants to get back at that Lord of Hell for dragging this girl this innocent away. And it also shows that he is damned to hell for doing this. And um actually an angel makes an appearance a couple times saying, You're supposed to fight on our side and Constantine for a while is like, No, you guys damn me to hell, I'm not gonna deal with you and they're like, Well, you kinda did it, so like, why don't you just redeem yourself? And they're like, okay, okay, there's there's redemption. Um, they do show a couple of his old friends. They don't really tell why they're his old friends. He kind of just alludes to, uh, you know, a couple of them have different powers and stuff like that. Don't really say that much. 
And then they also, the main female character of this episode, who actually was played by Maid Marian, if you've watched the old, uh, not old, but... Um, Robin Hood. Robin Hood. From, Robin Hood. Uh, she was in it. I don't know if they were planning on making her more of a main character, because I could see that they were going to bring her on in the series. And then at the end, they're just like, nah, we're going to cut her out. Um, so, <laughs> you know, it could have happened that way. But uh, there, she has this way of scrying, which is, you know, looking at magical things by, like, blood drops from her hand onto an amulet, onto a map, and tells you where something really evil is going to happen. And so at the end of the episode, they unveil this huge map of America with all these little blood droplets of evil places going to happen. So a lot was introduced. Um and you know what it is a TV show. So they have 25 episodes or 24 episodes to try to solve a lot of it just this season and then carry on to next and next and next. So I, I do I do think it'll it'll turn out pretty well. Um, I do got to say that the actor who played Constantine was spectacular. I, I mean, you know, when Hugh Jackman first appeared as Wolverine, you're just like, wow, that's Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Didn't get that sense as, as strongly with this Constantine character, but it was... Just the look and the feel of him was just, yeah, it was like he was ripped straight from the comics. So I think they did ops, off, uh, blah, 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 awesome with that choice. So that'll be fun to see uh, as it goes through. And then, you know, just an overall synopsis of the first episode. It was a little rough around the edges, but did it paint a good picture of what's to come? Yes. Am I happy that I watched it? Yes. If you haven't watched it, check it out. I believe you can probably find it on demand on most uh, cable networks or just go to NBC.com and watch it because it definitely was worth watching. And I think this is going to be a show that I follow throughout the show. Good. You better. I give it a four Chewbacca Chainsaws out of five. Okay, Are three and a half. Three doing that? Half. No, we're not really doing that. But I'm just, I just decided to throw that in there right there. Because I gave zero Chewbacca chainsaws to our last thing that I reviewed. So you have to make something up. <laughs> I have to give some away somehow. I always give away Chewbacca chainsaws uh, for our entertainment show. And so I had to give away some, somewhere in there. But yeah, so. I mean, I can give it to them. No, but, yeah, but you don't have. Half. That don't sound like this isn't even that great. Three and a half out of five. That's, like I said, it's raw, but it shows you, you know, that it was going well. It's going to go well. And I originally gave it four, but it's really three and a half. So you give them, what, ten? Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, so, Brendan, as a person who hasn't watched the show, are you going to watch it now? We'll find out. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so that's a no. He won't watch anything in the world. Um, but yeah, so let us know what you thought. If you watched the pilot episode, did you like it as much as I did? Did you like it more or less? Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. Where's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways to get a hold of us. And uh, let's take that and roll this into movie news. Not really news, but movie conversation. A night at the movies with Brian and Brendan. Hi. Now we're talking about a movie that's going to come out anytime soon. It's going to come out in the future sometime that means I have to talk about Kevin Durant whenever I hear that sound effect <laughs> so, <laughs> I bet you Kevin Durant, Durant will love this movie, movie. <laughs> he's going to be in it too uh, not really but all right. Uh, but let's talk about the Suicide Squad movie now um, we talked about this a couple months ago there was a leaked kind of you know format for the films the DC Universe films that are going to come out then uh, a couple weeks ago at New York City Comic Con They had an even bigger one, but 90% of those were untitled. And then, just last week, at an investor's meeting, they gave titles to each one of those movies. Now, we'll talk about all the other movies, like the Justice League 1, 2, Green Lantern in 2020, and all that next week. But this week, I really wanted to focus on a movie that I think is going to be able to take the DC Universe in a direction that's going to totally differentiate them from what Marvel's doing, and that is the Suicide Squad movie. Um, and the Suicide Squad, if you don't know about them, is actually a group of supervillains, imprisoned supervillains, um, that are taken by the U.S. government and sent on these black op missions. You know, impossibly hard missions that you're likely not going to survive. Hence the name Suicide Squad. Now, in the I comics... Say, that's a pretty gruesome name for a, for a comic book group. Yeah, well, like, yeah. I mean, uh, edgy, um... It is kind of edgy, yeah. And I think it started in the 60s, too. The 1959 was the first one, and then it had a couple episodes, uh, a couple comics, and then went away, and then came back in the late 80s, where it really started taking off. 
Um, but the, the Suicide Squad has a revolving door of different villains. Now, it really started as a Is way to kind of... because them keep dying? Eh, we're not going to spoil anything. I don't, I don't know. I'm sure a bunch of... just call them the Suicide Squad. Come on yeah, now. I'm sure a bunch of them die. I'm sure a bunch of them die. But uh, it's, you know, in the 80s, it, it really, you know, it, it was really meant to bring some of the, uh, you know, the lesser known, more eclectic uh, villains and kind of, you know, show them a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of give them a bigger name. And so, like, so one of the cast, uh, you know, Deadshot. Deadshot, everybody knows about Deadshot now, but before Deadshot was appearing in the Suicide Squad uh, comics, People just were like, oh, who's that guy? Oh, he fought Batman once or twice? Oh, okay. Um, but then you have people like Captain Boomerang, uh, still a little lesser known one. Um, Harley Captain Quinn was actually... Boomerang. In I just... Captain Boomerang! But uh, you had Clock King, who came out of that one. Plastique, Bronze Tiger, Deathstroke was actually part of it for a time. But so it, it was kind of a way of saying, all right, here's some villains, and it also served another purpose in the DC Universe, because these villains were working off their time in jail by doing these missions for the U.S. government. It also kind of made sense, like, how do these villains always get out of jail yeah. all the yeah, time? That, that is a question. I mean, you usually assume that they've escaped or something, or they played some trickery. Like, I, I have seen uh, some comics where... Um, yeah, there's some legal trickery that goes on to get people out or whatever. They they throw out all the evidence because the superhero didn't follow proper protocol or something like that. You know, things like that. Or or he didn't appear to really accuse him, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so I've seen that kind of thing. But yeah. but you're right, you're right. Some of them do go to jail and it's like, why did they get out? Well, how Unless did you get out? out? What are, what and, are you doing? And what's going on if these these villains are just breaking out all the time? Like you'd think that they would figure something out about. We need a new prison them. system, <laughs> you know. So we need it, super it kinda, super high security prison. It kinda we helps should just make, throw them in the ocean. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. It kind of helps make the comic books, you know, a little bit more realistic with some of these villains that keep coming out and everything. But so they're in talks right now. Well, they're they're past talks. They've already signed a director, and they're in talks with several different actors to actually play roles in this one. Um, now, David Ayers is set to direct the Suicide Squad movie. Now, if you don't know who David Ayers is, he's a great writer and director. He wrote things like Training Day, the first Fast and Furious. He wrote U the screenplay for U-571, which was a great World War II submarine movie. But he also directed movies like the newest movie, Fury, which he also wrote. End of Watch, if you ever saw that one, that was a really good one. Um, he also wrote that one. He directed it. Street Kings, eh, mediocre. Harsh Times, mediocre. Now, his one really, really bad movie that he wrote and directed on his resume was Sabotage, and that was an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, and it was... it was. Oh, oh, I don't even remember that one. Yeah, it so. was bad. It just came out last year, too. It was bad. Like, that's a horrible movie of the week. It might have gotten one Chewbacca Chainsaw if I had rated it. But I already watched it a long time ago, and I don't need to torture myself with it again. In fact, actually, I'd rather watch that one for 24 hours than watch Detention again. I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> but so you have really big actors, actually, that are rumored to play this. Will Smith is in talks to sign on. I, I don't know which which role he'll play. Uh, Tom He's Hardy. He's been in talks for a bunch of like just odd projects lately, like in the last few years. I mean... Um, you know what? I really think Will Smith should be a superhero. Now, if I had to pick a... a he was already in a superhero comic, remember? Or not comic, but... Count. Yeah. That doesn't well, count. That's probably why he might not be in more because it's no, like the one that he chose great. was Hancock. Yeah, but he would be good in one. And you know what? I would really like to see him play. I'd like to see him play. Um, what's the, the John? I can't remember his last name. The Green Lantern, the Black Green Lantern. Yeah, yeah. No. Even make him Hal Jordan and change the character that's to a better Green Lantern in my opinion. I, I liked him more, but maybe that's because I I know the that iteration Green Lantern a little better because I wasn't around for the first group. so I don't know. But I, I even think he would make a great Hal Jordan Green Lantern. I, I just think that Will Smith could probably play that pretty well. Not saying that Ryan Reynolds wasn't a good Hal Jordan. It just he wasn't in a good superhero movie with the Green Lantern. Then. But that's, that's kind of neither here nor there. Uh, and you also have uh, Margot Robbie. I don't really know who that is, but she's apparently big and famous. Um, but also close to sign. Uh, those are those are all people close to signing, and they're also talking about how you know DC's kind of creating its own cinematic universe similar to Marvel, and we have heard that Jesse Eisenberg is going to play Lex Luthor in the Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice 
uh, movie, and they are saying that he might be one of the group members of the new Suicide Squad in the movie. So now I, I'm not. I don't know about Lex Luthor being in there because he's definitely one that I would imagine doesn't get into jail very much because of his, because he's careful for one. Um, to have deny whatever to have enough separation from things so things don't trace back to him as much um, definitively and he has so much money um, he just manipulates the system and he can literally manipulates the system he controls so much going on so, so it would it would be kind of interesting now again it sounds like a young Lex Luthor but and I'm also know. not really sold on Jesse Eisenberg being Lex Lex Luthor now I wasn't sold on Heath Ledger being the Joker and he came out and surprise us all, so yeah, we'll have to see about that. But that's, you know, they're talking about bringing him in there. I'm just thinking about who Will Smith would be in uh, the, the Suicide Squad. Now, I guess he could be Bronze Tiger. That's a regular recurring one, and that's kind of... Normally, you had Marvel rip off DC. I think this is one of DC's rip-offs of Marvel, because it was a Wolverine. Like, he didn't have a healing factor or anything like that, but he had, like, Wolverine claws. So that might be an interesting one. Um, Deathstroke, I could see Will Smith being a really cool Deathstroke, but I could also see Tom Hardy being an awesome Deathstroke, so probably Tom Hardy for Deathstroke. But, uh, you know, maybe Captain Boomerang. Um, who knows? Maybe uh, just anyone. Yeah. Who knows? It's Will you know Smith. You know what? He, he, could, he would be good as well as anyone. He would be good as any of them. That is true. But there is a huge cast of villains that you could draw from. I mean, the ones I already mentioned, but plus you have Enchantress. Penguin was part of that group. Parasite, uh, he's a big villain in the DC universe. Harley Quinn was actually really famous as a member of the Suicide Squad. She yeah, makes some had, sense. She, you had, yeah, she would be pretty cool in there. Uh, Poison Ivy was a Suicide Squad member. You also had Batman and Adam and um, join up with the groups every now and then because they're going on these crazy secret missions. Uh, Black Adam was apparently there. Uh, at one point, they have Oracle, who is Barbara Gordon, after she's been shot by the Joker, and she's in a wheelchair. She's kind of like their information broker. Um, uh, you know, Clock King would be cool. Yeah, there, there's plenty of really cool characters. And it's interesting because they could diversify the group of superheroes. Because th- if we follow Marvel's trend, it's going to be white, middle-aged men, like in their 30s to 45. That's all the superheroes you get from them. Yeah. What? I mean, that's all Marvel gives you. They give you white guys like Marvel between or DC? 30 and 45. And DC would be able to diversify by giving you some black characters, some female characters, some younger characters, some older characters. You Marvel know. has all that. It's called X-Men. It's called just, just X-Men. Yeah. Name we, one lead we X-Men that character. Are old, we have blue people, okay? All right, name <laughs> one major X-Men character that is not between 30 and 45 and is not white. Like uh, major character in one of those Ju- movies. Uh, Jubilee. Major characters in one of the she's movies. Major. We're, not, we're not talking oh, about the, the comics. The we're talking about the yeah, movies. They, the comics, about, yes, is diverse. No, I was talking about the movie universe. You have Thor. You have Iron Man. You have uh, Captain America. Those are the, the headliners. You have Hulk. You, I mean, then X-Men. they run Scarlet. Just, just still, uh, X-Men. Hawkeye. I mean, again, X-Men. And even in the X-Men movies... Thor. Who was the main characters of the X-Men movies? You had Wolverine, you had uh, a middle-aged, uh, both, um, you had the old versions, also you had the younger versions of, you know, Magneto and Professor X, both white guys, you know. Storm, she was a sub-character at best. She was never really a lead character. Uh, was... What's her face? Uh, Mystique. She's blue. Okay, fine. But she she's blue and she was young for a lot of it. I'm just saying, you didn't see much diversity out of the yeah. Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm when saying, you do have a lot of diverse characters. We can agree. Yeah. They do have a ton of diverse characters in Marvel. Looks like these... I thought you were talking about just like the, the comics in general, because we're not talking about something that's come out yet. No, we don't we're know. Talk, we're what we're talking about the movie universe. I was talking about the movie universe. Okay. So I think this will be a really cool vehicle to start seeing you know, a lot of cool characters coming from a lot of different backgrounds, which, you know hey, it's a giant world out there. Everybody watches these movies, so it'd be cool to see. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm just excited about a Suicide Squad movie. Let us know what you think. Hit us up, comments down below. Who would be your perfect Suicide Squad team? And what act, what pl- uh, parts would uh, Will Smith and Tom Hardy play? Let us know. Hit us up, comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. What's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Let's take that and move that over to Quick Hits of the Night. 
And our first quick kit is going to be uh, Lucasfilm is challenging a trademark by the Empire Brewing Company um, because they're trying to trademark their new beer, which is called Strikes Bach, like Bach, you know, B-O-C. So th- okay. it would be the Empire's Strikes Bach beer. I, just, uh, yeah, I kind of like that name. I, I don't really drink, but I kind of like that name. It sounds interesting. And Lucas is like, no, you can't do it. Uh, 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 no, it sounds too much like Empire Strikes Back. No, shut up. It's just a funny parody. funny play on words. I guess I was going to say parody would get it out of like copyright problems, but doesn't allow you to trademark as far as I'm aware. But yeah. I don't know. Oh, well. But let's move on to the next quick hit. And uh, Snowpiercer is out on DVD, so if you have not seen it, it is an awesome movie. For some reason, it didn't really get released in theaters, but it has Chris Evans in it. It is awesome. Go out and get it, or watch it, or just do something, see it. It it is really good. It's really enjoyable. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is Jim Parsons is going to voice uh, Buddy the Elf in the Elf Christmas series. Now, that was the Will Ferrell movie. Um, And that is... making another... No, it's going to be a Christmas special. Uh, it's going to be on NBC. It's going to be a stop-motion animation series. And it's going to call, be called Elf, Buddy's Musical Christmas. And it's set to release on December 16th. So I, I kind of liked Elf. I thought that was a fun movie. But now you're making a Christmas special out of it. Uh, That's what they do Christmas with specials. movies. Shrek has his own Christmas special. Yeah, they're not good. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that kids like it, though. I'm just Sometimes. letting It's a quick hit, all right? That's how it goes. But let's move it on to the next quick hit. And uh, the first trailer for Avengers 2 Age of Ultron was out. And you got to see some pretty cool things. You got to see your real first look at Ultron, what he, he'll look like. Uh, you saw, saw the Hulkbuster armor in that one, so that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that thing is... I, I don't know if I if I understand the Hulk. I understand it's supposed to be to fight Hulk, but I, I, I just don't... I don't believe that you can make a machine to fight Hulk. Well, Hulk, yeah. I mean, Hulk is supposed to just get stronger and stronger and stronger the matter and matter he gets. So if you just get a big machine that makes him even angrier, you lose. Yeah, I don't know. I, I guess, like, I know that he had some minor limitations that he could get around, but I I don't know. I guess it depends on the writing. You know, it's not, you not in like, everything be the most powerful thing, but I don't you know. You should just get, like, an anti-psychotic pill gun and just shoot anti-psychotic pills into his mouth. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't think that, you know, uh, instead of a, a Hulkbuster, they would go the route of um, something to calm him down. Yeah, that seems like a better way to do it, if you ask me, but, hey, I don't write comics. Uh, yeah, uh, a sedative uh, or something. Yeah. So let's move it on to the last quick kit. And that is The Crow, uh, the movie from the 90s with Brandon Lee, who died while filming, is set to uh, start shooting the reboot in 2015. And so that was an interesting movie. Um, not the greatest movie in the world, but it had a lot of potential. And so hopefully they'll uh, actually take advantage of some of that potential. Yeah, I remember seeing that movie, and I don't know. I was like, eh, whatever. I knew people that really loved it, and I was like, eh, I'm bored. Yeah, it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't that great. So let's hope they make it great, because there was a pretty cool comic series that it was based off of, and so there's lots of places to go with it. So. I'll admit, I didn't give it a fair shake. I, I was just distracted. I had other stuff going on. I didn't care. So. <laughs> but, but okay, is... we'll see the reboot. <laughs> yeah, watch it. And that is right. Quick Hits of the Night. <laughs> Okay. All right. <laughs> I think we're... And so, wow, we've, we've been going for a long time already. Wow. Well, let's talk about our video games. Yay, video games. And uh, Sony just came out with their most recent uh, firmware 2.0. So they updated, the, you know, the, the software on the system, the, like the... What, what, what do you call that? Yeah, on PS4, that's what I meant. Uh, like... Like, what do you call that? Is it, is it a software update, really, for... It's a system, system update. Yeah, system update. And a couple of cool things came out, but there's one thing in particular I really want to talk about that I see this as the reason why I love PlayStation now and I don't love Xbox anymore. You know, they're going the almost the opposite route of Xbox. Xbox is trying to make themselves an entertainment system where they dictate to you what you can play, and if you want to play anything even a little extra or let your friend borrow a game, they're going to be like, okay, pay us more and pay us more. Just 
a way of microtransactioning money out of people to PlayStation where it's like, hey, we want to give you a good experience and let you have a good time. And that is the share play feature. Now, this feature enables you to invite players to a room or, a, you know, like kind of a, a game room or a couch situation, something they call it, and they can, number one, uh, watch you play the games that you're playing. Like, hey, man, I got this cool new game. Watch me play. So okay. kind of like a, a personalized Twitch? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, cool, you know, I'm watching the game. And, and then, you know, even if your friend does not have said game, hey, you want to try it out? Yeah, I'd love to. You can have a feature where you can hand the controller hand the virtual controller over to somebody, and they can play too. So let's say you're playing Destiny, you know, and it's like, hey, man, I, I really like this game. Can I try it? I don't know if I want to buy it. Sure, man, go ahead. And you can hand the controller over, and your friend can start playing, even cool. without purchasing a copy of the game. So, I mean, whereas Xbox wants you to pay $10 if you let your friend borrow the game so that they can play it, PlayStation says, here, we're going to give you trials of these games for free. Now, there is a one-hour time limit on that. That being said, the one-hour time limit can always be reset with the same amount of people. They just don't want you to, you know, say, here, start playing this game, and then you walk away and let the person just play for free pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it's reasonable enough that because they're giving this feature, maybe in the future, maybe in the future the trends will change and they'll allow other stuff, but that, it's still pretty cool, the, that level. And an hour is a good amount of time. Yeah. Like, I would almost expect uh, if they're really just trying to give people a taste and things like that, they would only allow for you know, ten minutes. Um, but an hour's good enough time. You can get through a match with an hour, or do many things with a. You can do many things. Hour. Now that's not all. Now you do the one level. thing. The one thing you do have to do is you do have to be the person hosting the room does have to be a PlayStation Plus member, which not the biggest deal in the world. I don't. Yeah, know. well, that's kind of standard for. For PS4 though, because you—that's what you need for your network connectivity, right? Yeah. So uh, I don't think so. Not all of it. Um, oh, like okay. some games, you do need that for online play, but not all of them. Um, now, the people you invite into the room do not have to have PlayStation Plus. Oh, that's right? nice. That, that is not actually required. very nice. Um, but the other cool thing that you can do is, let's say it's a game that has a couch co-op, a local co-op, which not as many games have it anymore, but there are still some out there that don't really have the online feature. But let's say, uh, I'm just going to throw it out there, FIFA or something like that. A game that can be played online, but it can also be played together, you know, you know, right next to each other. Well, you know what? They still let you do co-op, so you can still play with two players on one of those games. See, that's that's really cool, because um, that helps with the situation of um, the, the, the local co-op. Like, um, just simulating, essentially, the on-the-couch environment and social... Uh, aspects that we used to have when we had to be in the same room, um, but we've been we've talked about it before. We've been uh, moving away from that for a little while. To everyone now has their own system in their own house, and there's less of the 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 club. Like um, with this latest generation, I thought that it was almost going to go away. Other than for the the Wii U seems to be still going with that, but um, Destiny doesn't have any um, local co-op. Unfortunately, oh. it doesn't, and that would be a really cool thing. Now, for in, a game other like games Destiny, like that, like, it wouldn't work. You'd have to hand the controller over. You, if it has a local co-op, you can play two players. If it doesn't, you'd have to. But like, there's those still, but because of this expectation, games. this expectation of um, of people just separating out. I don't think a lot of people were even trying to go for that. But maybe now that they have the share feature, it might encourage developers to go back to that kind of format. Now, now you might say why bother? You could just have it online still, but I like that aspect of having the ability to play locally on my couch, and it sounds would be cool to be able to also be able to do it from far away and keep that kind of social dynamic going. Um, yeah, well, like, I mean, like we were sitting together the other night, and we're like, hey, can I, I was like, hey, can I hop on Destiny with you? Nope. No. No, we used to do this in Halo. Can't have, do this. Yeah, which which would be cool. But think about I know Halo's not going to be on PlayStation, but they, we're just going to give this an example. Halo, they do have a really cool local co-op. You can play through the story with two people. Any other game like that? Well, hey, you can do that with this new PlayStation thing. So you're right. I think it will encourage more developers to because that's not hard to do. I can't imagine it's too hard to say. Okay, we're just going to throw another character in the main story and let it roll. Um, yeah, and with this feature that makes so much sense too, even with the idea of I want to get, it helps uh, advertise the game to other people by letting them try it. Well, 
if you're playing like level, let's say we're in a level game, level 20, right? And you say, hey man, you want to come try this out? He's not, your friend might not be able to really do level 20 very well. You might say this is like the best part of the game, but if it's his first time, you want to have someone guiding him through, someone playing with him for those kind of games. And now he can do that even far away. That that That's really cool to me. That's... And I also could see it really kind of diversifying um, some of the game sales because, you know, you could be like, hey, man, I got this game. Oh, okay, well, here, you want to try it real quick? Jump onto my, sh- my share play and we'll try it. Oh, yeah, well, hey, you know what? I got this game. Uh, you might like it, you know, and you jump onto their share play and try it. And, you know, you get more... Like, the demos are kind of dead for the systems. They, When the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 first came out, demos were all over the place. That kind of died out towards the end of the system. This is your way of getting a demo of a game, and then, you know, okay, maybe that's a game I wouldn't have thought I liked, but playing it with SharePlay, I really do like it, and so you know what? I want to pick up a copy. Or, you know, different stuff like that. So you get more games. I, I, I just see this as a vehicle to sell more games uh, and in a positive way by giving mm-hmm. you a sample. Um... You could compare it to a drug dealer being like, "Here, your first time's free." That's the comparison. That I do. That that's just the route that's you go. That's a negative <laughs> comparison, but hey, you know. So, but yeah, it's just I just it's it's a way Staying of PlayStation cool, creating a better community than Xboxes. Xbox seems to be like, okay, just give us money, 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 and PlayStation's like, hey, we want your money, but we want you to have a good time with it too. So you know, it's a win-win situation. I see it as. Yeah, definitely. Um, but let us know what you think. Uh, hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. What's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. And we're going to actually have a bonus uh, video game story because we thought we were going to go short on time. And, yeah, that never happens. Why do we ever think we're going to go short on time? I don't know. We were crazy. We are crazy. <laughs> but but we wanted to talk about it. So, Brendan, let us know. He is our Warriors of Hyrule resident wizard player. Um, so they just came out with a DLC. Let us know what's going on with that. Yeah, I think they came out with the DLC um, a little bit ago, but I picked it up um, recently. Uh, they, they did a few things recently that were, were really nice with DLC. First, uh, like I think a week ago or so, they pushed an update to everyone, so just a, an update, but this update was not a normal update of like fixing glitches or adding small tw- uh, tweaks, it was, hey, here's a bunch of new characters. I was like, oh, what? That, that's a cool update. That's nice. That's a nice update. Here's a bunch of new playable characters, and they were really fun playable characters. Um, so there was that. And then we also picked up um, the recent DLC that's come out so far. We actually got the like season pass, so we'll get a bunch of the other ones as they come out. But the first set, for those new characters that they pushed out, hey, now there's more storyline levels. And there's a fair number more that are, are pretty fun going through the, the bad guy's uh, end of the, the story, which is, is nice. Like how the well, bad guy... Because at the end of that game, they had Ganondorf had a couple levels, so I'm guessing they're giving them more now. It, yeah, well, this wasn't even Ganondorf. There was, a, there was another um, bad guy before you get that Ganondorf's kind of controlling Sia, mm-hmm. and it shows how Sia gets all the monsters under her control and how she like uh, manipulates things. Uh, some of the bad guys from the other time zones and things like that. Uh, so it's like her rise to power and how she uh, orchestrated things in the background, which is pretty cool. And she's a fun character to play as, so, and some of the other uh, characters are too. Uh, it added an entire new map to the adventure mode, which is, the adventure mode is like a giant um, the original Zelda map with a bunch of squares, like over 100-something. And now they're like, here's another one which is harder than the Master Quest one. And that's... So you just have so much more gameplay because I'm playing through the adventure mode right now and it's already really hard, um, but fun. And, and if you watch the completionist, so he much. hates he hates that. He, you know, there's so much. it adds so much more time to it. I think the completionist like beat it with the, beat the adventure mode and he took him two hour, 246 hours to beat that. Yeah, and now now I think they added another one, and you know that's that's a lot more gameplay yeah. for your money if you really like the the stuff. And they they gave a bunch of new costumes too, which is which is nice. Whatever. Some uh, people like know, that more than others. Yeah, I know uh, Rose really likes um, those costumes that they gave specifically. So hey, cool. Um, they added new weapon. My favorite thing, they added a Pona. 
as a weapon. Um, and I don't know how they figured it out, but I got Epona and I kept getting stuff, and now Epona's the strongest thing I have. Cool. Like, almost immediately. <laughs> um, it, and it plays, uh, opponent plays uh, fairly, fairly cool. Um, I had been missing having horses in general in the game because in some of the other Dynasty Warriors games, you do get horses. Yep. And horses are a different way to play and really help you in some of them because now you can run through a bunch of guys and, and hit them and get hurt, hurt less. And opponent plays like maybe a mixture between there because it's not the same level of just run through and destroy guys, but you do get some of that. So. Yeah. so, but but so the DLC, well, the you know, but you're saying so this first twice. DLC, like, was... it gives so much, okay, and so it's well done. It's it, well done. It's, it's worth getting if you already own Hyrule Warriors, or if you're thinking about getting it. You, they are showing that they're gonna be adding in extra stuff. So I don't know if you're a Hyrule Warriors fan, or if you have it, or if you don't have it, is this gonna convince you to get it? Hit us up. Let us know. Comments down below. Of course, at what's my face on Twitter, what's my face at gmail.com, and Google Plus on Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But you know what? I think that's going to wrap up tonight's show. Um, and uh, so, as always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. Yo. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. <laughs> Good night, everybody!